higher or lower pitches. So section one means that the three and five are higher, are sonically higher pitches. Section two means that the three and five are sonically lower. Section three means that the three is above and the five is below. Yeah. And they're only, that's, that's it. And for each section and, you know, for, for each position, mm -hmm. you have a certain number of, st of strings that are required to play that particular configuration. Right, right. Yep. So, again, yep. it's a way to catalog and index the information. That's, that's, that's what all that's for. Yeah. It's, really, it's really worth kind of knowing because it really does help you get, it really does help you organize it in your mind. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's what study all the sections, triad sections and positions, calling out note function as you play it. You know, I mean, that's, so do you, you know how to practice this, right? You, yes. Okay. All right, so that's what that is. And then the next thing that we were doing was we were walking autumn leaves in the key of uh, B flat mm -hmm. or G minor, uh, however you want to think of it. Uh, stay... Stay in the first five frets of your bass, doing triads plus the one. Because we now you know how we have the uh, bebop devices? Mm -hmm. Right now we have walking devices. And the purpose of these walking devices are to restrict your choices, which forces you to be more creative with less material. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, for your bass line to be solid, it, you need to own the triads. You just, I mean, they need to be your main guys. They're, right. they're, they're at the top of the toolbox in every bass line that you ever play. Yeah. So you can't know those well enough. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to take a song and just improvise using just that information, triads plus a one. Now, you know what that means, right? Yes. Okay, one, you know, beat one has to be a root note of the chord, a new chord. Beat two, three, and four can either be a one, three, or five of each chord. Right, and then and you always want to connect the fourth beat of where you are to the closest root note sonically that you can. You don't want you want to avoid the wide interval jumps. For example, if I were going one flat three five flat three, I wouldn't jump down to this F here. I would play this one because it's a whole step higher. I would go here because it's closer. One flat three five flat three one five three five one one five three one five three five. So explain to me again when you say triad plus root, what is the plus root referring to? Well, that, I just said I just explained that. I said that uh, the way it works is the first beat of each new chord has to be a root note for now. That I understand. That, all right. Beats two, three, and four can either be a root note, a one, or a third, or a five. So triads plus a one means that you can use a root note on beats two, three, and four. You don't have to use a three, five, three, or three, five, three, or five, three, five. Oh, okay, okay, I understand. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Tell me something. Do you uh, are there occasions where you would, in sequence, repeat a note? Sure. But uh, it depends on what note you're repeating. The three doesn't really work well repeating. Mm -hmm. The five can. The root works the best. So I could go one, one, five, flat three, one, five, one, one, one. So the root is the strongest there. It doesn't really work well to go one, flat three, flat three, five. It just, it just doesn't work. Or I go one, five, five. The five's a little bit more forgiving. But the roots are the one that really does that the best. I would stay away from the other notes. You can, you know, it comes down, you know, it really comes down to, you know, you have these things that, you know, you asked me that question. I said, and I'm, I'm telling you from my experience that those things don't really work as well. But you may find a situation where it does. Mm. So sometimes you try it and see if it works. See how yeah. it sounds to you. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, it's your ear that makes a judge. You either like it or you don't. Uh, the, the thing that, so, you know, you had said that one should generally try to avoid big jumps, right? But okay, okay. Big con consistently. You want to, you know, and it's also how you do them. Mm. Because 
that uh, that's one thing that the triads let's say we opened up the whole net that's one thing the triads plus the one will do because if i want to get from a lower let's say if i'm on this c here and i want to get up higher i might go one five one flat three one five one one so right there i just covered a span of two octaves in two measures and it, and it flowed okay because the five is a is halfway between the lower one and the higher one so it, it it's a smooth transition up so just using quarter notes that's the best way to transition up is use a one five one a one three one that that's too far away it just doesn't smoothly go there as one five one to my ear right um So, I mean, if you're going, um, you know, it's not going to be a smooth walking bass line. Now, that, again, that's an extreme example that you, nobody would ever really do, but right. it, it, it gets a point that, you know, they, it needs to be a gradual rise and fall is generally the way these things like to sound. 